Sega Master System 2. So here's the deal as far as I understand it. Sega of America didn't know how well the Sega Master System was going to do in North America and they didn't want to sink too much money into like production and distribution. So they actually gave the rights of the Master System in North America to Tonka. Yes, that's right. I said Tonka. They make like toy trucks for kids they were actually you know the ones in charge and the ones who had the rights for the master system in North America which sounds really strange but they did now of course in 1989 the Genesis came out and obviously that was doing really good in North America so Sega wanted to take back the rights for the master system and once they did that they brought out a new version of it. This is the Master System 2. This came out in 1990. Obviously it's a cost re reduced version of the Sega Master System and that does show with a few features. I've got the original Master System here just for comparison reasons. Obviously there's a difference in size. The Sega Master System 2 is quite a bit smaller but there's also a few things that it's lacking. First off, the original Sega Master System, as I've shown before, has an AV out port. It's just like a standard 8-pin DIN, same AV cables as the Sega Genesis. Unfortunately, on the Sega Master System 2, they took out the AV ports. Strictly RF not a whole lot unlike the NES, which of course when the NES2 top loader came out, they took out the AV out ports. So that was one way to reduce the cost. The other thing it doesn't have is the card slot. Some Sega Master System games came out on little cards instead of cartridges. They were smaller memory and they were cheaper to make. So they were kind of like the, the, uh, the, uh, like the value games. Some of the really cheap games came out on these card slots. Um, and, well, they took the card slot off on the Sega Master System 2. So you can't play the card games. Now, most of the card games suck, and there's not a lot of them. So that's not a huge deal for me. But for some people, they might want the card slot. Well, there's also an expansion port on the back of some Sega Master Systems. This one doesn't have it. My other one does. There's some uh, pin contacts under this little uh, flap here. So there's obviously no expansion port. That was never officially used, so of course that's really no issue. Unless of course you're modding it to add your own FM sound to the Sega Master System. Some people do sell uh, a little board that you plug into the back it will give you the FM sound. Obviously you couldn't plug that into this one. Also there's no power LED. When you turn on the Sega Master System there is a green light to let you know it's on. There's also a reset button on this one. On this one there's no reset button and there's no power LED. Otherwise all the same stuff's there. Obviously the same two controller ports. we got the power switch here. And we've got the pause button here. They've got a weird slot load on here with this flappy cover thing. Kind of wish that they just did a spring-loaded uh, flap like they did on the uh, original Master System. On this one, you have to pull this thing up, and it's a little stiff, and then it snaps, snaps open, and then your game sits in there like so. Take it out. You know, it's exposed unless you actually close it. I could picture a lot of kids playing this. You know, they're not going to close that every time they're not playing a game. So why they didn't have a spring-loaded flap, I can't think that that's to save money because, quite frankly, it's just a spring. 
uh, but uh, that's how it was done. So now, like I said, I got this one loose. I paid twenty dollars and fifty cents for it. The guy that was selling it said it was untested, as he did not have the cables for it. So I took a chance on this one. Now, one thing I did check was I checked with other things that this seller had. He didn't really have a lot of video game stuff. His store was a collectible store, and they had he had a lot of uh, baseball cards collectible items, figurines, comic books, stuff like that. He had maybe one or two other video game related things, but you could tell it wasn't like video game orientated. So I kind of believed him, or at least it was feasible that he didn't have any means of testing this. Now if it said doesn't have the cables, it's untested, and he clicked on other stuff he was selling, and he had Sega Master System this, and Sega Genesis that, and Sega Genesis 2 and you know Nintendo Super Nintendo if he had tons of video game stuff it would be a little harder to believe that he had no means of testing it and the chances are it wouldn't have worked at all luckily this thing came in amazing shape there's absolutely nothing wrong with it nothing's broken nothing's cracked and it works flawlessly also luckily I did get this loose, no controllers, no RF switch, and no power adapter. That's not a problem. The same power adapter that you use on the Sega Master System works on the Sega Master System 2. That's even the same power plug that you can use on a Genesis Model 1. I've shown that before. If you have a Genesis Model 1, you can use that power adapter on your Sega Master System. You can use that power adapter on your Sega Master System 2. That's actually what I've got here is the power plug from my Sega Master, er, sorry, my Sega Genesis. Model 1 Sega Genesis, not Model 2. The Model 2 Sega Genesis is a different plug. This is an RF switch. I've said it before, basically any system that came with an automatic RF switch, they're all the same. It doesn't matter if it's an NES, Super NES, it doesn't matter if it's a Master System or a Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, a Jaguar, I mean, you name it, if it had an automatic RF switch, it's going to work. The only exception is some very old consoles may not work with the automatic RF switch. It really depends on the console uh, and your RF switch. Sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. This just so happens to be an RF switch from a Genesis. So we've got the power plug and the RF switch from a Genesis. You can even use a Genesis controller. No different than the Master System. Just like the Master System, you can use a Genesis controller if you don't have a Master System controller. But of course, I've got a Master System controller. So, like I said, I took a chance on this for $20.50. For $20 I mean, it was a no-brainer. It was definitely worth picking up. I knew I was taking a chance on it, a slight possibility that it didn't work. And even if it did, I thought it might be an easy fix. But like I said, I got lucky, and it worked. It works great, in fact. Throw in Sonic the Hedgehog. Whoever played that really sucked at this game. <laughs> that wasn't me playing, by the way. That was just the demo. Unfortunately, you can't close the flap when the game's in. I think it would be really cool if the game stuck down just enough that you could close the flap over with the game inside. But, whatever. Now here's something even cooler. No game in it. Turn it on. And you get Alex Kidd and Miracle World built right into the system.
that to me is awesome. Free built-in game.